Our second speaker is Liliane Dusevoir. After obtaining a bachelor's degree in translation and interpretation in Belgium, Liliane specialized in the field of linguistics and pursued her graduate studies in anthropology as a Fulbright scholar at Boston University. In the U United States, Liliane taught at Brown University and at the College of the Holy Cross before joining Boston University in 2006, and is a senior lecturer in French and Spanish in the Department of Romance Studies. Please join me in welcoming Liliane Dusevoir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for those kind uh, uh, words. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be here and to share with you something that uh, passionates me, and that is comics. Um, now, the question I would like to propose to you tonight is, can comics be taken seriously? So. The speech balloons are an amazing device because they allow um, to integrate. So comics are made of words and drawings. But speech balloons actually allow the, um, uh, the artist to make the words an image. They bridge that gap. Um, they also have um, a very uh, they also are very uh, interesting expressive devices. Um, they can have pointy borders or a little ribbon of flowers or a little cloudy, and they all convey a different meaning. Um, you can also create sound effects by having very large font or different colors. Um, I'm going to move on to these are panels. Um, you also have uh, borders on panels. Uh, they can be uh, straight lines or a little um, roundy or a little wavy or a little pointy. Or you can have no border at all. No border at all usually means a break or a transition. Um, but you see um, these borders allow um, the artist to convey an extra layer of meaning. In this panel, you see feet and the bottom half of legs. And uh, you naturally assume that um, there is a body attached to it, right? Um, well, it's actually incredible, this ability that we have to perceive a whole, while in fact you're on only observing a part. And it's an ability to reconstruct the invisible. And that is called, in the jargon, closure. Here, you have a sequence of three panels. And I would like to call your attention to the space between each panel. In this series of panels, the cartoonist did not draw these characters opening the door to the car or them sitting down in the car, or putting the belts on, or starting the engine. And yet, everything happened. But it happened only in your imagination. That is closure. The space where it happens between the panels is called the gutter. The American cartoonist and comics theorist Scott McLeod has described the uh, a phenomenon of closure masterfully in his groundbreaking um, uh, work called Understanding Comics, Invisible Art. And he says about the gutter, quote, it is really where all the magic happens. It's that space where the human imagination takes the separate images and transforms them into a single idea. It's pretty awesome, I think. Film uses closure as well, but comics rely a lot more heavily on that. And Scott McCloud identifies six different types of narrative transitions or closures with a varying degrees of ellipse. The first one is moment to moment. So in the bottom right, for instance, you see that person sleeping with their mouth open, and that Scorpio going nearer and nearer their mouth. Um, it requires very little imagination on your part. 
to understand what's going on. But you can widen the closure. And here, action to action, you remain on the same subject, but a different point in the action. Very commonly used in American comics and European comics as well. This transition is also used a lot in American comics, in uh, European comics, um, and it's called subject to subject. That basically you change subjects, but you still are um, in the same time frame. In this one, uh, you see this person is crying, and this person is consoling them and saying, um, "No, no one could have survived that crash." And she's saying, "You're right." And then you have that big jump. Meanwhile, and that person um, stranded on an island, um, and you immediately understand that they're talking about that person, and there was a shipwreck, and that person actually did survive, right? But that required a lot of deductive reasoning on your part. And then the last one I'll talk about is aspect to aspect, which is very characteristic of mangas. Um, so they describe this is happening, all of these panels at the same time, in the same place, but they are viewed from different angles, and it creates the effect of suspended time. So this is a figure of speech called ellipse. We're going to talk about another figure of speech called metaphor. So you see this butterfly. If um, I asked you what words would come to mind when you think or you see a butterfly, you might say uh, beautiful, um, majestic, ephemeral, metamorphosis, mirroring. In fact, this butterfly appears in this manga where this man, a 40-year-old man, is praying over his dead mother's grave. And um, this butterfly appears no less than nine times. And this butterfly appears right when this man, or when time is going to warp for this ma man. He's going to suddenly be his own self at 14, reliving his 14-year-old um, that's incorrect, but you know what I mean. And um, um, at a time that was something very traumatic happened to him. And if you look more closely at the butterfly on this page, you notice here that the butterfly is straggling the gutter and here as well, as if the butterfly, that metaphor of time warp, is superimposed on the panels and is adding another layer of meaning, that metaphor precisely. So this author, Jiro Taniguchi, uh, manages to combine these two incredibly powerful figures of speech of ellipse and metaphor. And authors constantly are creating new ways of creating meaning. Um, so speaking of conveying complex ideas, this is the same manga by Jiro Taniguchi called um, Distant Neighborhood. On, the, on your right hand, you have the original version in Japanese, and then on the left hand, you have the um, um, uh, English translation, a um, French translation. So a manga is left from right to left, top to bottom. And the translation, or in, um, in English, it's read uh, left to right and top to bottom. So you notice this man here is eating his rice. And he's on the left side of the page, and the boy is on the right side of the page. But in the translation, the man is on the right-hand side of the page, and the boy is on the left-hand side of the page. So the translation, and this is an interesting illustration that translating a comic, a graphic novel, is not just translating words. And it's making, again, the point that it's just, it's a lot more than just words and images. Um, you will also, you may also have noticed that not only have they been uh, changed from left to right, but that boy has been flipped. So, if the boy had, had, been rem had remained looking to his left, 
he would have looked outwards of the page, and that would have added a meaning that's not in the original um, in the original uh, comic in the original manga. It would have meant maybe him being wistful or sad or nostalgic or looking or longing for something. So conveying complex ideas and translating or adapting them. So what kind of stories can you tell with words and drawings? Everything is possible. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite um, comics. Um, and um, hopefully, uh, you'll be interested in picking one of these up. Um, you have all sorts of genres and themes. You have classic cult mouse uh, by Art Spiegelman. Um, it's a young boy growing up in New York and his parents having survived the Holocaust. And, um, his parents are represented in, uh, by, uh, with m mice and the Nazis represented by cats. You have Fun Home that you may have heard as well uh, by Alison Begdell uh, talking about her relationship with her father uh, and growing up in not so fun home but a funeral home, the family business. It's been adapted um, talk about translation into a musical and won a Tony Award recently. You can talk in comics about anxiety and depression. This is Ordinary Struggle by Manu Larsenet. And so this character here, this depicted white, is having a panic attack. It's very interesting how it's depicted as white, like emptied out of his blood. And then you see all these brooding, brooding black um, clouds closing in on him. It's a very interesting way of articulating and um, conveying um, um, meaning. You have Sophie Labelle. Um, she is a Canadian uh, uh, cartoonist, and she um, draws assigned male at birth. She has a webcomic as well, or a serious trans vibes, and she talks about her two trans girl heroines. Um, it's very funny. You have uh, the Nicotopol trilogy by Enki Bilal. Maybe you know the movie that was made after um, this trilogy. It's called The Fifth Element by Luc Besson. Talks about the future, about climate change, about future cities, future technology, mm, genetic mutations. An Ocean of Love talks about the fishing industry. Uh, look at the beautiful grays here, um, used silver grays and whites. Uh, fishing industry and climate change. You have the uh, graphic novel, Blue is the Warmest Color, um, that inspired the movie, very controversial movie. Maybe you've seen it or have heard of it. Um, so the author, Julie Marot, uh, uses the blue as sort of a trail to create a form of meaning. Uh, it is at Mugar, if you'd like to uh, borrow it and read it. It's really, really, really beautiful. Uh, this is the graphic novel, uh, The Snowpiercer, and the movie was made out of that um, two years ago, I think. This is um, another topic, adoption. Marjan Satrapi. She wrote Persepolis. There's also uh, an animation made out of her graphic novel. Um, these also are available at Mugar Library. Uh, she talks about uh, growing up in Iran and then emigrating to Germany uh, when the regime became uh, dangerous and uh, oppressive. This man falls in love with this woman who's HIV positive, and they take a little spin the, a cartoonist on the idiomatic expression about talking uh, about the elephant in the room. Yeah. So, can comics be taken seriously? I hope I have made a case for it, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. I think I went really fast, so there's plenty of time for questions. <laughs> and does anybody have a question? Yes. Hi, Lillian. Hello. Um, in our okay, in our um, band destiny class, we talked about how 
primarily there are a lot of um, male characters, at least in the past. So would you say that there's been a change in primarily like female characters now or what has happened in society that um, has there been a change? Thank you. That's a really cool question. Uh, so I'm going to repeat it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that the mic was working. But so um, Emma was asking, um, what about the status of women in graphic novels? So I've shown you a, a little diversity in authors and cartoonists here. Um, but it is true that it's a very male-dominated um, uh, scene. Um, Alison Bechdel, uh, who wrote Fun Home, and also Are You My Mother, and also a lot of uh, other uh, art, uh, has established a rule to um, determine if um, a comic or any uh, movie maybe uh, are um, including women. And maybe you know this, um, it's a, a metric. Uh, so um, is, is there a woman in the story? I, I don't exactly remember all the steps, but is there a woman in the story? Um, does she have a name? Uh, does she actually talk? Or is there more than one woman? Do they talk? And when they talk, do they talk about something else than a man? So yeah, if you start looking at movies or comics, or, um, y you start uh, thinking, oh, wow. <laughs> so yes, the field is very dominated by males. And uh, actually, last year in France, um, the uh, top festival, Angoulême, uh, that rewards cartoonists. Uh, the three nominees were male, and they declined the nomination because they were uh, angered uh, that very um, talented female artists uh, did not made, even made the nomination. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And so I, we are seeing a shift there. Uh, but there's also a, a problem with the representation of women in the comics. Um, sometimes, or very often, uh, women used to be de uh, portrayed and depicted as ob objects, you know, uh, very desirable and uh, um, materializing the fantasies of the uh, cartoonist and their readership, who's also predominantly male. Thank you. Anybody else has another question? All right, thank you very much.